Marcus, thanks very much. Uh, James, sorry, it's good to see you again, mate. Can I, and thanks for sharing your time with us. I know you're a busy man, it's a busy week for you. Um, can you give us your impressions of the win over Leicester last Saturday and the fact that it's earned you the right to play in a semi final against uh, a team like Toulouse in front of your own fans this coming weekend? Uh, yeah, it was obviously, um, you know, it was a very tough weekend. Uh, Leicester, a quality side. Uh, that first half we we played particularly well and built a decent lead through playing good clinical rugby and I think in the second half we probably let ourselves down, we didn't exit well enough. We gave them life, gave the crowd life and made it hard for ourselves but I mean the resolve in the team, the defensive efforts that we, that we put in, uh, James Ryan had a few massive key steals, the scrum was gone uh, a bit topsy-turvy. But we managed to come out on top later on in the game, and you know we closed out closed out a very, uh, very, very tough game uh, in very tough conditions. Um, so you know we're happy and we're looking forward to uh, to Toulouse this weekend. And you're playing a team who will have no fear coming to Ireland to play an away match in in a knockout stage of a competition because they did it last weekend. They beat Ulster recently, um, and they're just used to. I mean, they're a real cup. A, a sort of a cup final winning team, aren't they? They're a championship side, that's for sure. I mean, they, I mean, they hold the, they currently, uh, they're the current champions, the current double champions, and they're a team that that play a beautiful game of rugby, you know. So, um, on top of all that, we know if we can get our stuff right and try to limit their opportunities, um, we can go a long way. We weren't clinical enough in that second half against Leicester, and I think if we give Toulouse those opportunities, we'll be on the, we'll be on the back burner for most of the most of the game. So. Um, but you know it's all about us and what we can do um, obviously they have a lot of very very uh, notable individuals that we need to keep uh, keep on red alert for but mate that's the part of the game you're into knockout footy it's amazing to be at home uh, especially after obviously Montpellier earlier on in the year uh, losing out on that five points to still manage to get a, a home semi-final and be able to repay you know you know, hopefully we get a sold out crowd. There's 25,000 tickets already sold. So uh, that travelling support that we also had in Leicester didn't go unrecognised. You know, coming off the bus and seeing seeing so many fans and flags and people cheering us on. So we walked into wealth, uh, walked into into that stadium. It was amazing. So if we can get you know half of that sort of passion this weekend at the Aviva, it'll go a long way. And I mean that's something that the players are acutely conscious of, isn't it? The fact that the the fans turn out home or away, and they'll part with their hard-earned money again this weekend to to create a bit of a cauldron at the Aviva Stadium. Yeah, that's the plan. Like it was actually, uh, you know, it's it's goosebump sort of thing. It puts the hairs on your neck, makes them stand up. So it was this, you know, it was something like you you see it at the Aviva every now and then. You know, the hundreds and hundreds of people standing as the bus turns up, but jeepers, we're in Blim on Welford Road and there was just the same amount of people. It was the same people as well, the people who turn up in the, in the rain, snow or the sunshine. So uh, it's amazing to have that support and to be able to repay them with a home semi-final. We're going to need them uh, for the full 80, hopefully only 80 minutes this weekend. Cheers, mate. Enjoy the week. Thank you. Hi, James. Ashley here from Off the Ball. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Um, some resume, I guess. Um, man, they've got some. I mean, like you said, Grand Slam. They've they pipped us uh, obviously over in France for that, and uh, they're coming off the back of like you said, previous champion. They they're the current champions cup holders. Uh, they won the top fourteen last year. Um, Man, it's a, it's a huge challenge, but something we're definitely looking forward to. Uh, I know they've they knocked over Ulster up there to to book their place in the quarters, and then just pipped uh, Munster in the weekend. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can uh, stop them in the tracks uh, from beating all the Irish Irish boys up. Yeah. And as a team, you've done a lot of hard work to get to this point. A really competitive group. I'm sure that's that's what you want within a, a winning group. Does that bring a sense of pressure as well to always want to make the starting team? 
Yeah, I mean, there's only 23 boys who get to play, you know, on the Saturday, but there's a squad of 40 odd who who are definitely competing. There's some very very good players who don't get to play week in week out. So, um, you know, this team, the po- a serious point of difference is that competitiveness from Monday to Friday. Um, it doesn't matter who who's lucky enough to wear the jersey on a Saturday. From Monday to Friday, if you're picked or you're not picked, you're doing work to make sure that the boys who are playing uh, are prepped to the best of their abilities. Um, so it's it's an absolute privilege to have to have gone away to Leicester and, and come away with a win. But I know that this week is, is you know, the intensity's through the roof again. Thank you. Hi James, it's Bernard here at Virgin Media. How are things? Good, thank you. How are you? All good. Um, James, Leinster, Toulouse, jam-packed at the stadium. Is this as big as it gets in European club rugby? I mean, in any sort of club, club rugby, I think this is as big as it gets, you know. Um, they've got five stars on the chest. It's something that we've been striving for for a few years. Uh, they're the current holders, the current... Uh, current Pro 14 champions, like we said. Um, you know, to, to win this title, you've got to beat the best. Uh, fortunately, we're playing the best at home this week. So um, everything, uh, you know, the ball's in our court. Our home fans will turn up in droves, I'm sure. Uh, Dublin will definitely turn it on. And we know if we can put in a performance, a, a clinical performance, we can put our best foot forward come Saturday. And that's what we're planning to do. How much of an incentive is that? You spoke a good bit there about how good Toulouse are, I suppose. Look, they're five-time winners of this competition, but you guys are, are very close to, to knocking them off their perch and also, you know, equaling their record. Is that is that a massive motivation? Uh, I think the motivation in this group probably comes from within this group, you know. Like, we've got so many good players. Um, we, you know, we've, we're so, so lucky here to have the players that we do. It's, it's really up to us. We know how good Toulouse are. We know the threats that they pose. But at the end of the day, we know if we can get our stuff right, then that's going to go a long way. Um, we've got, you know, from 1 to 8, from 9 to 15, from 16 to 23, there's international caps in the hundreds. So um, mate, if we can turn up and make sure we can impose our game, uh, hopefully we don't... They don't get in a mood and that to loose mood that uh, that they've shown throughout the years. Um, you know we're we're focused mainly pre- predominantly on us and making sure we can get our stuff right. And then uh, you know the score the score will hopefully take care of itself. On that, I suppose, and getting your own stuff right. You mentioned you know room for improvement. Do you, do you feel Leinster need to deliver their their best performance of the season at the Aviva this weekend? One hundred percent. Like I mean, every game you're striving for that complete performance. You never you never really get it. And this Saturday is something that we need to make sure that we do do because um, any sniff of a chance, uh, any repeated defensive sets against Toulouse, you know how uh, how good they can be in, on attack with ball in hand. So. Um, Mate, we're, we're focused on us defensively making sure we get it right. We put in a good defensive performance, but unfortunately we we were poor in execution in terms of our exits, so we compounded defensive sets on top of defensive sets. We know that with an attack inside like Toulouse, that's going to be a different beast. And, um, mate, hopefully, uh, hopefully we're not as... Uh, hopefully we're more clinical this weekend. Final one for me. I think, I think it's been three years since Lancer played in a... In a European final, has it has it been too long since Leinster played in the final? I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, the sides that we we have lost to have been very very good sides, and on those days they were definitely better better than us. But we know on our day if we can get get all our ducks in a row, cross our T's and dot our I's, there's no there's no reason as to why we can't be the team um, at the end of the season to have that cup. So that's the plan. Toulouse are an amazing side, and um, you know we'll, come, we'll we'll turn up Saturday and put a, put our best foot forward. Best of luck, go well. Thanks for being. Thank you. Hey James, how are you? Benty Senior, how are you? <laughs> uh, um, ha- have you done any place kicking, or is there any plan this week? Because we saw obviously what happened at the end of the the Munster match, and you don't know who's going to be on the field. Yeah. Uh, so have you done place kicking? Or is your name put forward in the event? Um, yeah, I I did place kick like 
in school I was I was place kicking a lot uh, club rugby back in New Zealand um, I've been place kicked a lot um, you know of recent times for obvious reasons you've got the Sextons the Burns the Frawleys Gary Ringrose um, you know there's a there's a long list so um, but you know if a hundred minutes of footy is played and um, I'm still standing then you know I've I think I can nudge them over from uh, from in front, uh, but yeah, that's hopefully it doesn't come to that. I don't think any team wants another hundred minutes of rugby. I, I know the drama is amazing for the spectator, but um, Jeep is when I heard that that game went to a hundred minutes, I was Jeep as I I wouldn't want to play a hundred minutes of footy. Eighty minutes is well and truly enough. Yeah, that's enough for any man. <laughs> score back to 17-9 Jerome Kano who's one of their best players he went off as if they were holding him for a big top 14 match the week after um, what's your memories of that game and I mean do you think he'll face a Toulouse with a different attitude this week in that they were just coming back from a kind of a long slump it was a long time since they had won the top 14 they, they went on to win it that year but what's your memories of that game um, you know it was a highly contested game beautiful day at the Aviva um, yeah, it was topsy-turvy, but I think we got the better of them. Um, we worked them well around the corner a few times, and we were very clinical at the ruck and our, at our set piece, and that went a long way. Um, like I said, I, I feel like if we can get our stuff right, then we'll, we'll put our best foot forward. When we come unstuck is when we don't get things like the ruck right and our set piece isn't functioning as well. Um, and then funnily enough, those two worked well in the weekend and we just couldn't exit off, off the back of it as well. So those are things that we worked on um, and we'll, yeah, I, here's hoping that uh, we don't give them too much ball, too much easy ball because like I said earlier, they're, they're an amazing attacking, attacking side.